Hello students, I welcome you all again to my video lecture on plant pathology. So, in my previous video lectures, we had studied about the fungal diseases, the various fungal diseases with respect to plants, we have studied in detail and also we studied about the molecular pathology in detail. Now, let us continue with the other pathogens which causes diseases in plants. So, today let us study about the diseases caused by mycoplasma like organisms in plants. According to your syllabus, we have two different diseases to study. One is sandal spike disease and grassy shoot of sugarcane. So, let us study these two diseases in detail. So, before going in detail about the sandal spike diseases as well as the grassy shoot of sugarcane, let us study what are these mycoplasma. So, you know better because we have studied this mycoplasma in our first MSc also in detail. Just I will just highlight what actually this mycoplasma is. As you all know, this is one of a prokaryotic microorganism in the sense it has been placed under kingdom Monera. All students please remember all the prokaryotic organisms has been placed under the kingdom Monera according to Whittaker system of classification which I often talk in class also. So, according to this Whittaker system of classification this mycoplasma has been placed under the kingdom Monera as all prokaryotes has been placed. This mycoplasma uh, organism microorganism which is a prokaryotic one is similar to that of a bacteria, but smaller than that of a bacteria and uh, this was first identified by uh, Nocard and others Nocard et al in 1898. This is one of a, a prokaryotic organism which lack cell wall, whereas this bacteria they have the cell wall, whereas this particular organism lack the cell wall, please keep that in mind. These are the organism which completely lack the cell wall. This particular organism before it was named as pleuronemonia like organism PPLOs. Later in 1967 it has been officially named as mycoplasma. Mycoplasma like organism are as I had mentioned before also are wall less prokaryotes that cause diseases in many higher plants and in some cases in insects that transmit this mycoplasma to that of a plants. Most of the cases this mycoplasma is being transmitted to the plant through the insect vector that we have to remember. Although mycoplasma like organism morphologically resemble culturable members of the class molitus molecules and are susceptible to the same antibiotics, the inability to continuously culture this organism in vitro has prevented their def, uh, prevented them to classify them as molecules. So, here this mycoplasma like organism they resembles like that of molecules, this molecules or the group of organism which lacks the cell wall. The only difference between this molecules and this mycoplasma is this mycoplasma cannot be cultured in vitro condition. However, the recent sequence analysis of mycoplasma like organism that is 16S ribosomal RNA, our RNA sequencing has been done which clearly established that these pathogens form a unique cluster of organism that are phylogenetically related to gram positive bacteria and to the culturable molecules. So, this is a group of organism which has a characteristics feature which has been shared between that of a culturable molecules. 
what are these molecules these are the group of organisms which lack the cell wall so this mycoplasma like organism after sequencing its rrna 16s ribosomal rna has been sequenced and the phylogenetic tree have was constructed and it was it was uh, later it was known that this particular mycoplasma like organism which has an ability of infecting the plants they shares the characteristic feature of gram positive bacteria as well as the culturable molecules however this mycoplasma to conclude this mycoplasma like organism is a prokaryote they lack the proper cell wall is completely lacking they are they uh, couldn't be cultured in vitro condition in our uh, culture media in vitro condition it is is not possible to culture them you can find them infecting the plants through the vectors insect vectors or the one which are involved and in plants also you can find them destructing the sieve tubes or what are these sieve tubes where you can find these or the tubes which you can find in phloem especially where the infects the vascular bundle especially the phloem is been infected because of this mycoplasma like organisms because of which the transportation of food material the translocation of the food materials is been blocked because of the damage of the phloem tissues especially the sieve tubes have been damaged by this mycoplasma like organisms hence it causes various diseases in plants so now let us study in detail about the different diseases this mycoplasma like organisms causes in plants so first let us study about sandal spike disease so we all know about this sandalwood botanical name santalum album this sandalwood is one of a economic and economically important plant you all know its importance it is highly expensive because of the hard wood it has got where the oil has been extracted and used for various purpose hence this sandal wood plant has a highest economy in especially the south indian region of in uh, especially in karnataka tamil nadu and kerala region you can find them growing extensively and uh, has got high economical value this sandal wood plant has been infected by some of the organisms like that of mycoplasma amelos where this particular amelos is been transmitted through the insect vector called as munia munia species munia albima culata is one of a insect vector which transmit this particular disease and also there are various research which tell that even there is a parasitic plant as you all know dodar commonly called as dodar plant cascuta cascuta which is one of a parasitic angiosperm even through this parasitic angiosperm a cascuta plant the infection of mycoplasma can happen transmission can also be happen and also there are some research which also suggest that as we all know the sandalwood is one of a parasitic plant it is being found as a parasite root parasite with that of the various species of the plants say for example acacia albizia bambusa cassia gossypium pongamia vitex vitex tectona these are the some of the plants on the roots of this particular sandalwood plant is found to be a parasite and they absorb the nutrition by by producing the hostorium or the root like structures and they grow and flourish even through this particular root contacts the transmission of this mycoplasma can also happen 
However, the insect vector which transmit this particular disease is Munia species. This disease was first reported in Kurg district of Karnataka in 1903. This is was first thought is caused by viruses, but in 1969 it was Verma et al reported that it is mycoplasma like organism which is causing the disease called as sandal spike disease. This disease is confined to India and Indonesia. In India, this disease is common in Karnataka, Kerala and Tamil Nadu. Coming to the symptoms of this particular disease. The symptoms are usually on the branches of the infected plant where you can see as the name of the disease suggests sandal spike spiking of the branches happen. You can come across two different kinds of spikes. One is a rosette spike and a pendulous spike. What is this rosette spike? It is characterized by severe reduction of leaf. Here in this particular image, you can find a rosette spike. See here, this is a normal plant and this is a, a spiked plant where you can find the reduction, reduction that is characterized by the severe reduction. See for example, here there are some healthy leaves, here the leaves are reduced, Re severe reduction of leaves and severe reduction of an internode. See, you know what is internode? The space between the two nodes is called as an internode, nodal region from where actually the leaves arises and the space between these two leaves or the nodes, they are called as internode. If the internode distance is being reduced, what happen? Crowding of the leaves on leaf bearing branches. It is in case of rosette spike where you can find the severe reduction in the size of the leaves and also there is a reduction in the internode distance. So, if the internode distance has been reduced, so what happens? The crowding of the leaves, see here in this image you can find a branch which is showing a rosette spike where actually the internode has reduced and also the leaf size also has reduced which is looking like a rosette. Hence, it is called as rosette spike. And also the newly formed leaves are still more reduced in size and the leaves become stiff, the leaf become stiff and stand like a spike. The leaf become reddish and it become yellowish. This symptom appears just before the death of a tree. See, once this mycoplasma has entered, it enters inside the vascular bundle, enters inside the phloem tissue, inside the sieve tissues, it grows and develops and finally, finally just before the entire phloem has been destructed, finally the symptom you can see on the, uh, see on the branches. So, such symptoms you can find only before the tree is going to die and the flowers show phyllody. What is the meaning of this phyllody flowers? Usually the flowers will be of attractive colors, sepals, petals and all you may see those flowers which are showing attractive color. Whereas if the plant or a tree has been infected which is producing the flower, it show phyllody. The meaning of phyllody is the flowers are becoming leaf like and also the fruits are not formed and the root tip dries resulting in the loss of the hostorial connection with that of a host. As I had mentioned before also, the sandal tree, sandalwood tree is one of a parasite, root parasite, which has got a host because the infection with that of a mycoplasma like organism, the, the root tip of the santalum album dries, which leads to the loss of connection with that of a host plant. Ultimately, the infected plant dry and die. So this is about the rosette spike. There is one more kind of spike which you can come across in case of uh, this uh, sandal spike disease that is called as pendulous spike. As the name indicates pendulous that is the, the branch become very long. Why it becomes very long? Due to continuous apical growth. You, you know the apical growth it is continuously growing without any proper thickening. What is the meaning of thickening? 
that is for any plant to stand erect it requires some mechanical support the mechanical support is possible only if the thickening of the cell wall happen with that of a lignin or suberin deposition should happen if it doesn't happen it is very difficult for that particular cell to stand erect because if it is only a parenchymatous tissue there is no proper deposition of the such kind of mechanical uh, uh, to get the mechanical support the cell doesn't has a support that is lignin deposition and all may be lacking that is the reason the uh, uh, without any proper thickening of the cell wall the uh, particular branch which has grown abnormally due to the apical continuous apical growth and without any thickening that particular branch cannot stand erect so that is what you can see over here in this particular images you can see there is uh, there are some branches which are showing such kind of pendulous spike just you can see those branches where compared to that of a normal leaves the leaves there they are very very small that is a reduction in the leaf has happened and also uh, uh, and also you can see the internodal distance has become so much and which leads leads to the drooping of the shoot so that is the reason it's called as pendulous pendulous spike rosette spike it is due to the due to the decrease in in the in the internodal region whereas here in case of pendulous spike there is an increase there is a, a large difference between the space of a node that is internodal region is more because of the continuous apical growth which leads to the lack of mechanical support without any proper deposition proper thickening would have not happened which leads to the drooping of that particular branch that's called as pendulous spike so these are the two different symptoms which you can come across in sandal spike disease one is rosette spike the other one is pendulous spike so how to control this disease there is no specific method to control this disease there are some reports which say that planting of mysore gum trees at the distance of 10 meter 10 to 20 meters from sandal trees keeps microplasma like organism away from infection the reason has to be still discovered tetracycline treatment check the disease for some extent but not a permanent treatment tetracycline can kill or make this microplasma like organism to be static for some time but but this is not a permanent treatment for curing the disease however there are various researches which is happening to develop the disease resistant varieties by tissue culture method to to develop disease free clones and transgenic strategies to drive the disease resistant trees may be the only solution for ridding the limited santalum album forest of sandal spike diseases in order to control this sandal spike diseases we have to grow some disease resistant varieties using various tissue cultural methods or transgenic approaches has to be done still this particular research is in progress and we have to go ahead if any of our students are interested they can take up this projects and they can develop the disease disease resistant varieties of santalum album so this is about the uh, sandal spike disease now let us move on to grassy shoot of sugarcane so this is also one of a disease on sugarcane caused by mycoplasma like organism and it is transmitted through aphids aphis indosaccharii rufalo cypium mydis these are the two different insects which transmit this disease to sugar cane and this disease was first noticed in 1919 in mumbai and is found still a problem in maharashtra this is has also been reported in andhra pradesh tamil nadu orissa bihar uttar pradesh punjab rajasthan and also in other countries like burma sri lanka taiwan thailand sudan etc so let us study uh, the symptom of this particular disease as the name of the disease suggest grassy shoot of sugarcane 
here the sugar cane plant which was supposed to grow very long and tall it doesn't happen because of the infection of this mycoplasma like organism which infects the phloem tissue of this particular plant so that the translocation of the food materials may not happen which leads to the dwarfing of the plants that is grassy appearance of the infected plant the plant looks like a grass plant sugarcane plant it should be very long and tall and should have a long uh, uh, leaf sheath leaf and all but here it may not happen because of the infection the sugarcane plant looks like as though it is some grass plant so initially the plant the leaves of the plant become white white the whitening of as you could see in this particular image you can see that the leaves become whitish and there will be a reduction in the internode because of the reduction i think you would have seen the sugar cane with nodes and internodes the nodal region it's little hard isn't it uh, and also the internodal region we try to sometime we try to eat this sugar cane the internodal region we like because it's so juicy and all the nodal region it's little hard that nodal region the distance of this nodal region become less that is reduction of this internodal region happen and because of this reduction of the internodal region the plant become dwarf and stunted the leaves will be narrow so as you could see here in this image the leaves become very small grass like leaf and become narrow internode become very short initially they are yellowish or whitish and the plant may not grow very tall it remains like that of other ordinary grasses so hence the disease is named as grassy shoot of sugarcane this is due to a organism mycoplasma like organism transmitted through fs indo secari so how to manage how to control this particular disease growing resistant varieties this is resistant varieties or available co 86249 cog 93076 etc avoid the uh, avoid the incidence of this grassy shoot of uh, sugarcane uh, by using such kind of uh, disease resistant varieties and if the disease symptoms are visible within 2 weeks after planting such plants can be replaced by healthy plants so even after 2 weeks of planting if there is no proper growth of that particular plant immediately those plants has to be removed from the root system entire root system has to be removed and it has to be disposed uprooted and it has to be burnt into ashes and better to replace with that of a healthy plant in that particular site and there is there are physical method of uh, controlling this uh, disease uh, treat the sets that is the planting material uh, has to be uh, treated at uh, in a uh, at this uh, the steam of temperature 50 degree celsius for 1 hour to control primary infection treating them with treating them in hot air oven at 54 degree celsius please make a note it is 54 degree celsius not 540 it is 54 degree celsius for 8 hours and spraying twice a month with a uh, feed sides a feed sides that is to control aphids the chemicals which we can use to control this aphids that is we can spray dimethonate at 1 ml in 1 liter of water to control such insect vector and also apply pesticides like methyl dimethon at 2 ml per liter of water for controlling aphids so however the to conclude to manage this particular disease use the disease resistant varieties destructing the infected plant burning them into ashes and treating them at higher temperature treating the sets that is the planting material which we are so you know for sugarcane we are not going to use some seeds or vegetative it is through vegetative propagation those are called as sets such sets 
before sowing or before the process of planting, treat them in the steam of 50 degrees Celsius for 1 hour to control any such primary infection. It can be either a fungal or a bacterial or any other so that those even this mycoplasma can also get eliminated. And also other method is you can also treat it in hot air oven, you can keep it in hot air oven for at 54 degrees Celsius at for 8 hours. These are through research and spraying twice a month with, uh, uh, with such kind of uh, insecticides. Uh, uh, so through such technology or using this uh, techniques, you can manage these diseases. However, there are no such chemical agents to completely destruct the mycoplasma like organism. Even in case of sandal spike disease also, the treatment that is if you are using tetracycline, it is not a permanent solution. Hence, the disease resistant varieties to that of mycoplasma like organisms has to be developed in order to overcome these diseases. Thank you students to listen my lecture. Let us meet in my next video lecture. Thank you once again.